Hey guys, Justin with Xander Homes. Today we're going to talk about base flood elevation, building in a flood zone. Uh, so you'll see the words base flood elevation or BFE for short, and we typically do pier and beam foundations. Um, understand the city of Houston just passed a new ordinance, if you will, uh, 18 months ago, that they are, if you're in a flood zone, you have to build 24 inches above the 500 year base flood elevation. It used to be for years that F they went by FEMA, what FEMA had. FEMA, Bel Air, some other municipalities is 12 inches above the 100 year. For simplicity right now, I'm going to go off of the 100 year. And uh, I'll tell you reasons why here very shortly. But when you order, you'll order a survey. And in part of that, in part of that survey, you'll need a tow pole survey that gives points of how high your yard is and the grass and the street. You'll get a general survey, right? It's just outlining the perimeters and your build lines of your house. And then you'll also get a, uh, el you need to get an elevation certificate. That will actually give you the BFE of where that is, where that base flood elevation is. And you gotta ask the surveyor, if you're in Bel Air, ask for the 100 year. If you're in the city of Houston, you gotta ask for the 500 year. So that's gonna be very important. So say we say we have that, right? And the BFE, say it comes back on your elevation certificate and it says 54. And so 54, that means think of it like a sea level or 50 feet of 54 feet above sea level. That's not 100 percent technically correct, but it's a simple way to uh, make sense of all this. So we're at 54, and say your your grade, say your grass is at 52 feet. Okay, well, we're gonna use round numbers right now. We're gonna be at 52 feet. So if you're at 54 feet and you gotta be 12 inches or one foot above this, your minimum required height is 55 feet above, you know, or 55 feet would be that number. So, but if, you're, if your house at grade at the grass line is 52, that's three foot above. My number, my number one tip, miss high, miss high, miss high. But if you look right here, let's let's go into let's go into the the construction of it. So you have a we're talking about pier and beam foundation. So this is the grade. This is the top of the the beam, right? It's kind of like a typical foundation, and you'll it'll be at or just three or four or five inches above grade, and so that's typically around thirty inches. And then you got this pier shaft that typically is bell bottom piers, and this can be all kinds of different heights. It's up to the soils test, but it can be 10 feet deep, 12 feet deep, 15 feet deep. So we're gonna go 12 feet deep. So the top of that foundation, all the way to the very bottom of that pier is you're talking about 12 feet deep. So they put rebar in it, of course, that rebar sticks out, then it connects to this pier beam. Then when they make up that beam, cause you'll pour this concrete in multiple phases. And then, so when it makes up to that beam, you'll have cages in here. And one big thing most people forget, there's a big piece of rebar that sticks out of that pier beam. So you'll have that piece of rebar stick out every two, three feet, whatever the engineer calls for. That holds in, that ties in the, the CMU brick that you're now gonna put on top of that foundation. That way it doesn't just wiggle and fall off. You put the concrete in there and it, it makes up as a strong structure. I've seen a lot of people forget that. It, it's <laughs> super important. Anyways, when you pour that concrete, you'll come in and you'll pour all these piers. You'll have 40, 50 piers on a house. And then you'll do that with your engineering. Then a couple days later, they'll make up and they'll come in and set up the forms and the pier caps, the sonotubes and things like that, uh, which are just very similar. And they'll pour that. And so you'll have that, you'll have that rebar sticking up. And then a few days later, you do some little bit of grading, rough grading. You'll get all your CMU blocks dropped and then you'll start laying your CMU blocks. So you have that CMU blocks and you fill certain ones with uh, mortar, to make it you know, structurally in sound, uh, but you do that. So like here, let, let's take this. We got four blocks, eight inches, you know, that's 32 inches. So anyways, you got a block, you got a block, you got a block, okay? Then you got some metal flashing. So we use that for different things. Uh, a lot of times for termites, you have an anchor bolt right here. So that's what that is. So that anchor bolt's tying that, that concrete now into your wood framing member. So you got a two by 12 or two by six laid flat. Then you go with your two by 12 right here. So now you're thinking of this like a crawl space or a first floor. 
Um, you put your two by 12 there, you have your subfloor, and then this is the finished floor height. So that's tile, wood, carpet, whatever you guys do. That, that final number, when you, when you close up your house, your BFE, it's the top of the finished floor. So that's important. It's the top of this number. So, you know, you can't just go off the framing, but you do go off of, you know, the tile or whatever that is. You're seeing all these steps. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of steps going up into your, into your house. So this is a very simple way to kind of dissect what that is. Now, kind of going back again, remember BFE is at 54 feet, but our ground, our grass is at 52 feet. That's, that's two feet above where they say it's going to flood in a hundred years. So we know we got to build two feet up. Then we got to build that extra 12 inches. So we got to build three inches up. And you'll see, I actually kind of did some rough math. We're pretty close here to 55 and, you know, 0. 0.75, which is almost, um, you know, a foot and a half to, to two foot above. Uh, that's the number one tip I, I can give you guys. Miss high, miss high, miss high. Because if you get up here and you put a house here and you're, you're just below, and it don't matter if you're, Point one below, you got to figure out how to raise it up. There's no, there's no going backwards. Uh, so always miss high. Yes, it does cost money. Yes, it costs extra step. If you're putting on brick on a house, stucco, the facade, the the CMU, the labor, all these different things does cost money. But always aim to miss high. At least six inches. You know, uh, it's it's worth it. It's good due diligence. The next best tip is when you have, you know, you have all your peers everywhere and then you you set up your form you do your form survey so here's your garage here's the outline of a house remember this is a cut view this is a top view and you put in your form boards like you would do like a post tension foundation or anything else get a survey get a point on that top left corner top right corner wherever that corner is the top of your form so that way if your grades at 52 and you do a form survey you can see how my form or the top of my concrete is going to be at or just above the grade. So this may come in at, you know, 52.5. That way too, now you have another number because you don't know your yard by the time you start construction, there's gonna be low spots and high spots and different things. That, that form, that form shouldn't move. So you have that number, then you can kind of do the math and say, okay, I need this many CMU blocks. And then I know I got a two by 12, I got, you know, three quarters or inch and an eight subfloor, and you can kind of do that math. So those are two little tips. The third tip we do, uh, just for due diligence, so we, we do our form survey, we miss high, and then the, the next thing that we do is we get them out, and we when we get the, our bricker out there, our mason guy, and we do the CMU wall, before we start framing, we get the survey out for one more time, costs us a couple hundred bucks, we get them out for one more time to tell me what the top, the, the height of that is. Just to confirm, just to confirm my uh, form survey, the top of that form survey with the top of that. Because above that, we're at 12, 14 inches depending on the framing material that you're using. So that's my last check. Because again, guys, if you miss that, even by a fraction, you got to now figure out how you're going to raise up a, a brand new house. So, you know, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about base flood elevation. You'll see the BFE, that's what it means. Um, I was a part of a lot, sat in of a, a lot of that, let me say that. Uh, City of Houston, they're 24 inches above the 500 year. What kind of number would that represent right now? Your grade would stay the same. The 500 year, it would typically is two to three foot higher. So say if we did the 500 year, this would now be 56. And then instead of being one foot above this, you would have to be two foot above this. So that, that would now have to be 57, 58. So now your house, where originally was at 55 minus 52, you were three foot, just over three foot off the ground. Now you're going to be 58 minus 52. You're going to be six foot off the ground. That matters, guys. It matters. Matter, matters if you're in a coastal region. Um, obviously, steps going up, but all the material, the labor, uh, and then the engineering that goes into it, because you lift these things up super high, and then you do a one-story, you do a two-story, you add, try to add a third floor to it, depending on the weight of the structure, full masonry, siding, so it has a lot of different things to it that just basically add costs. Um, I, hope that, I hope that explained a little bit of everything, what we do with base flood elevations 
and Parabene Foundations, what's happening in the city of Houston, as well as what's happening in the counties and Bel Air and some other areas. Harris County, Harris County has this has adopted this too. So, uh, and and it's all about flood zones. So this is in any flood zone. So, but if you're Montgomery, if you're Bel Air, you're down to different coastal regions, it all differs. You want to check that out. I hope that makes sense. This is Xander Holmes with your Construction Minute. Thank you.